Hello everybody, this is Pun the Frugal Streamer. I have some good news for you I think a lot of people are going to be excited about. I've been working on an NVENC video for RTX. It's something I've been wanting to do for a long time and I finally got a hold of an RTX 2060. Thank you to those who allowed me to use it. I'm really not sure if I can tell who they were. I haven't really asked, but they know who they are. We'll have that video out here soon, but I have to kind of put that on the back burner right now because I wanted to talk about something that's similar, uh, but I think is going to be something more important, uh, especially since you're going to hear about this here coming really soon. And that is OBS Studio version 23. So if you're not familiar with OBS Studio version 23, uh, they have had a couple of release candidates come out. Matter of fact, RC2 came out on the 14th and uh, we've been testing it, uh, you know, for a good week now. And I, I think they've got pretty much all the bugs worked out. And I believe they're about ready to release it to the public. So I wanted to kind of go over version 23, two major areas that I think a lot of people are going to be excited about. And the first is the fact that now OBS Studio will have integration with Twitch and Mixer. So uh, this is what the Twitch integration looks like. Um, I'm already logged into my account, okay? Uh, it's easy to do. Uh, you go down to settings, go to uh, stream, and you will have the option to log in here to your Twitch account. And OBS Studio will link up through the Twitch API um, to talk to the, you know Twitch. And it'll automatically set up your uh, stream key for your login and uh, you can also now update your stream information right here in these two windows. Now you have your chat window on the right. You have your stream information here on the left that you can update, which is really nice because uh, like a lot of people who've been using Streamlabs OBS, um, they've been able to, you know, access this stuff right on the OBS uh, UI. Uh, so now OBS Studio is kind of going that same direction. And the great thing about OBS Studio is that the the, the UI itself isn't as uh, much of a CPU hog as Streamlabs OBS is. Um, so this is actually even nicer in my opinion in terms of just efficiency and the uh, just ease of layout. So that's one thing. Now again, remember, this is Twitch and Mixer. Um, I know that uh, they are... Uh, working on um, functionality with YouTube and I imagine eventually Facebook also. This is awesome. Love it. All right. So the second thing, and this is the major thing that it really OBS uh, Studio 23 brings to the table, and that is the new NVENC architecture. They have did a uh, NVIDIA has restructured how NVENC works, and one part of this affects pretty much all of the NVENC encoders. Um, Fermi, some Fermi, uh, Pascal, Maxwell, and uh, your um, current Turing, okay, which is the latest and greatest one. Uh, so NVENC before ended up having to go and it would take frames and store it on your system RAM which would use CPU resources to do those transfers back and forth. It would then pull the frames from system RAM and then encode them for either broadcasting or recording. Now, instead of it transferring to your system RAM, it keeps everything on the video card. Uh, so it uses the GPU uh, memory instead of using system RAM to store those frames, which increases the efficiency of NVENC itself, takes load off of your CPU, Actually, in some cases, it's almost half of the CPU load now. Um, in my case, I mean, I was using uh, maybe 2% uh, CPU load while streaming uh, 1080p60 using NVENC, uh, as opposed to 4 to 5% before, which is, is just beautiful. It really was. That's one part of the NVENC uh, encoding structure that all in current NVENC, I would say, you know, within the last four years would be able to take advantage of. The second is the new NVENC that comes with Turing architecture. And so that is a, a new NVENC encoder. Um, it is uh, able to process encode video and transcode video at quality of X264. Now encoding X264 in medium settings at 8K, 1080p60. Um, they are very similar in quality. I would actually say that based on what I've done with testing with the RTX 2060 that I just got uh, done, X264 medium is slightly better in some instances and NVENC is slightly better in others. It is definitely better than X264 in fast. I will say that. And uh, 
if you can stream at 1080p 60 in what is close to x264 and medium settings at 6 and 8k uh and i mean that's pretty good as you know i'm pretty happy with that and that's why i wanted to talk about it because there is another little piece of news that i think a lot of people are going to be excited for uh, so the big issue and why i really haven't been able to recommend using rtx invink is just due to the price of the gpus themselves um, even the gtx 2060 um, although it is significantly cheaper than the 2070 and the 2080 2080 ti um, it's still going to put you out at $350. Uh, now, that is kind of on the border of uh, what uh, some people can use to upgrade to a newer CPU that can do that same uh, processing on X264. I would expect that you would listen, uh, you would hear um, here soon about the release of NVIDIA's GTX 1660 and the 1660 Ti. The 1660 Ti, I think, is going to run you somewhere in the neighborhood of around $279 in terms of processing the leaked the leak benchmark. So I'm going to reference WCC Tech for this as they have uh, kind of been putting out some articles here the last few days about it. But they're saying that the benchmarks are showing that is it is as powerful as a 1070 in some in some cases definitely more powerful than a 1060 uh, so that kind of gives you an idea where this is going but the good thing in terms of what i'm talking about with this video today is that the 1660 and the ti will have the new invink encoder uh, because it is a turing you're talking now you know the 1660 uh i would imagine is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 230 240 dollars uh that's a pretty good price for getting into a gpu that uh can give you 1080p 60 streaming at x264 medium preset quality but here's what's even better is as you will see in this next uh, WCC Tech article, they're talking about the 1650. Now, this is where it gets interesting because the 1650 is rumored to be somewhere between $150 and $200. So think about it, it's about $175. That is a beautiful price point for a card that's going to give you 1080p 60 streaming. It's it's nice for people like me who are in a unique situation that ha that has a separate streaming PC, but it's old enough that it requires me to not only upgrade the CPU, but it needs a new motherboard and RAM, which will put me, you know, probably close to four or five hundred dollars by the time that I'm done getting what I would want. And that would be a, you know, a Ryzen um, 7 uh, 2700X, 16 gig of RAM and a pretty decent motherboard for around 100, 150 bucks. Looking at that. And then comparing that to a hundred and seventy-five dollar GPU that can achieve 1080p 60 streaming, I'm more willing to go and just you know and keep the old CPU and motherboard RAM and just get a new GPU because it's going to save me money and it's going to allow me to achieve what I would have achieved spending four or five hundred dollars with a new CPU and stuff. So that is something for you guys to chew on and something I want you to think about uh, if the 1650 does indeed come out. Uh, rumor has it next month. So, um, and that's what I'm hoping. And if it's $175, then that is a fantastic price for getting into 1080p 60 streaming, especially for you guys that have, you know, PCs that I can only do 720p 60 right now, which is, you know, I'm right here. That's me too. So something to think about, and that's what this new OBS Studio is going to help you do because it uses the new NVENC. Uh, so anyway, guys, that's it for the video. I do appreciate it. Um, I will be in Philadelphia uh, next week, uh, but I will be taking my uh, streaming laptop, and I will be taking my camera so I can do some video up there, and I will be finishing the NVENC video there, and I will have that out and I'm looking forward to talking about that because the new NVENC really does excite me, and I'm, I'm happy to be able to finally see where I can go do 1080p60 for an affordable price. It really fits the frugal streamer because uh, uh, it's going to open up uh, 1080p streaming for a lot of people, I think. So anyway, guys, make sure you hit the like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. If you disliked it, then you know hit the thumbs down, uh, comment, 
you know, in the channel below any uh, anything you'd like to talk about. And, uh, you know, I do appreciate you taking time to watch. Uh, so this is Pun Frugal Streamer. Have a great weekend, and uh, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.